Quotes from, John Newton. From the Kindle, Deep Christian Quotes and Bible Verses. First Quote. And consider that the Lord does not observe the heart of man with the indifference of a mere spectator, but is an impartial and inflexible judge. I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards, according to what their actions deserve. Alas! Is it not sufficient to fill our souls with dread, that he sits as judge, not only upon outward actions, but he examines the very thoughts and intents of the heart? Can any of us stand under such a trial? Second quote. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hebrews 4 13. Third quote. Who that had seen me as a slave in Africa, could have expected what has since taken place. How unworthy am I of all that I have received, and most unworthy of the honor of preaching the gospel, which I too long despised and blasphemed. The language of Psalm 45 suits my soul well, many, O Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you plan for us no one can recount to you. Were I to speak and tell of them, they would be too many to declare. There is no end to the inventory of my mercies. May he who has given so much to me, and done so much for me, add the crowning mercy of a thankful heart. Though I can talk of thankfulness, I feel much insensibility and hardness of heart. But, I know that, while sin dwells in me, it will have such effects. Fourth quote. Alas! Though I know in theory what a Christian should be, I am still sadly deficient in practice. I am a poor creature, and see much to be ashamed of every day, and in every circumstance. Yet, though sin will distress, it cannot condemn, those who believe in Jesus. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 1. Fifth quote. The Christian, especially he who is advanced and established in the life of faith, has a fervent zeal for God, for the honor of his name, his word, and his gospel. The honest warmth of zeal which he feels, when God's word is broken, his gospel is despised, and when the great and glorious name of the Lord his God is profaned, would, by the occasion of his infirmities, often to generate into anger or contempt towards those who err, if he was under the influence of zeal alone. Sixth quote. But his zeal is blended with benevolence and humility. It is softened by a consciousness of his own frailty and fallibility. He is aware, that his knowledge is very limited in itself, and very faint in its transforming power in his own life. That his attainments are weak and few, compared with his deficiencies, that his gratitude is very disproportionate to his obligations and that his obedience is unspeakably short of conformity to his prescribed rule. That he has nothing but what he has received, and has received nothing but what in a greater or less degree, he has either misapplied or misimproved. He is, therefore, a debtor to the mercy of God, and lives upon his multiplied forgiveness. Thanks.